Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the first in this three-part series on how to boot. Today we're going to be going back to first principles in kayaking and thinking a little bit about the purpose behind the boot. But before we get started, I thought let's have something a little bit light-hearted. So here goes. If for more than one roof we say roofs, and to pluralise hoof we say hooves, then I often have thought perhaps that we ought, for more than one boof, to say boobs. Let me know in the comments below whether you think the appropriate plural for boof really should be boobs or something else. So what are boofs? Uh, boofs, boofs, whatever you want to call them. What are they used for? Well, simply put, the purpose of a boof is to keep the nose of your kayak high and dry while you are riding the river and to prevent it from plugging and plunging deep under the water's surface. We want to be riding on the top of the water the whole time. Traditionally, the boof is thought of as a stroke, often a single stroke, used to get you over particular features in the river. Holes, waves, ledge drops, for example. However, if we only think about the boof in those terms as a single stroke, to pull us over a hole or a wave or a ledge drop, that is likely to be a significant factor in why our boofs invariably fail. Because a good boof stems from good forward paddling. So what do I mean by good forward paddling? Of course, there are different styles of forward paddling for different types of kayaking. If you watch a marathon kayaker and a white water paddler, they will not necessarily paddle in exactly the same way. And that is purely down to context. A marathon paddler is very unlikely to encounter a rapid, whereas a kayaker is living in those. That's their bread and butter. So they are going to employ a different style of paddling. Nonetheless, there are things that marathon and sprint and sea kayakers do very, very well that white water kayakers quite often neglect. A crucial one of these is torso rotation, making full use of the back muscles and the core muscles, which are far, far larger than our arms. And yet, when we're taught to kayak in white water so often, and particularly with boofing, we're taught to grab the lip of the drop with our paddle blade and pull using our arms, and then maybe some form of weird hip thrust that's thrown in there as well. So rarely are beginners taught to rotate through their strokes, to pre-rotate reaching ahead of them to grab the water in front of them, or to rotate their way through the stroke. And this is something that is a fundamental flaw in so many people's kayaking. It was a fundamental flaw in my kayaking for a very long time, and I'm still playing with it and adjusting and learning. We all need as white water paddlers to move away from this bizarre fixation on upright paddle blades and move to something lower, wider, more stable. Why is this so pertinent for the boof? Well, the reason is that the boof is not some mystical elusive stroke that needs to be put in exactly the right place. The boof is just good forwards paddling. If we can master a low, wide stroke with excellent pre-rotation and post-rotation in every single stroke, then we will be driving our boats cleanly over the surface of the water in the direction that we want to go all the time, irrespective of whether we're passing over a wave or a ledge drop or a hole. And the way that we can force ourselves to learn this is simply to use wide, low strokes, like sweep strokes, effectively, starting from the bow moving all the way to the stern, keeping our core in that constant state of flow, rotating from one side to the other. Though it may feel strange at first, because 
many of us have been taught that we need to have our blade super duper upright when we're paddling forwards. It may feel strange at first. However, the effect that you are likely to feel when employing this technique is stability first and foremost. A lower, wider base will mean that you are less likely to trip up on a very upright blade. You will also notice greater power and the ability to drive your boat where you want it to be. Obviously, this is combined with other things. This is combined with looking where you want to go. There's a video on that just here. It's combined with having a sensible plan as to where you're going, eddy to eddy. But, technically, in terms of what you are physically doing with your body, changing this, this aspect of your paddling to this lower, wider base, these rotational strokes that force that torso rotation, will enable you more consistent. We'll be talking more about this idea as the series progresses, but for now, get out and give this one a go on your local river. Though it may be uncomfortable at first, deconstructing the way that you normally paddle forwards and changing it to something new, you will find that in time this will make a huge difference to your forwards paddling and your white water paddling in general. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this, and of course, whether you think the appropriate plural for food is foods. And if you feel like I've earned your sub, then please do consider subscribing. Likewise, feel free to share this wherever you feel comfortable. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, yes. Thank you, yes.